Shalom, shalom akulam. We are here at the beginning of the end. We're down to the last letter of the Aleph Bet, the Tav, and we're going to discuss its uses as a prefix and a suffix. But before we begin, we are going to see how to write the Tav in handwriting. The Tav in handwriting is almost identical to the block letter. We start on the right side and then the left side. Remember what distinguishes the Tav is this tail. One, two, is the handwriting Tav. The main use for the Tav as a prefix is in the imperfect tense for the second person. You will do this. We're going to see it in the masculine singular, the feminine singular, and also in the plurals. So let's look at the scripture. Breshit bet pasuk Shva Esre, Genesis 2:17. Umeetz hadaat tovara lo tochal mimenu ki biyom achalcha mimenu mot tamut. Breshit Gimel pasuk cha Esre, Genesis 3:19. Bzeat apecha tochal lechem ad shivcha el haadama. Kimi mena lukachta, ki afar ata, ve'el afar tashuv. So in the first commandment, in Genesis 2, we see that um, they were not supposed to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so the command there is lo tochal, that uh, initial tav means you will eat. It's in the masculine singular. And the result of the day that you do eat, mot tamut, which is translated as you will surely die. The first mot is an absolute infinitive, I believe. And it, what it really means is you will die a death. But we see that tav there, tamut, you will die, it's masculine singular. As a result of them eating comes the punishment, which is by the sweat of your brow, tochal. Again, you will eat, it's masculine uh, singular, you will eat, and then you will return to the dust. Ta shuv. So the root for returning is shinvav bet, and the top at the beginning is the imperfect second person masculine. You will return. Breshit Gimel Pasuk Shalosh, Genesis 3 3. Umi pri ha etz asher betoch hagan amar Elohim lo tochlu mimenu velo tig ubo pen temutun. Breshit Mem Gimel. Pasuk Shalosh, Genesis 43.3 Vayomer elav Yehuda lemor, ha'ed ha'id vanu ha'ish lemor, lo tiru panai bilti achichem etchem. In the second slide, we see the second person masculine plural. Again, we have the um, verb ochel, achal, to eat. And so we have the prefix tav, and we have the suffix vav, that u verb, that makes it you will eat, masculine. The verb um, linga, to touch or to, um, to get near to something or to touch it. So the, the verb is tigu, it's conjugated for the second person. Plural, we see that by the tav and the vav as the suffix. The last verb in this verse, again from the uh, root to die, lamut, and we see the tav as a prefix. We see the vav for the suffix, and then there's an extra nun. And we talked about this in the lesson on the nun, on the nun sofit. This is called the paragogic nun, and it uh, seems to indicate a case ending which is no longer used. In the second verse, on this uh, slide, we have the verb uh, roe, to see, and it is in the masculine plural. 
Uh, Joseph is talking to his brothers. He said, you will not see my face again unless you have your little brother with you. And so it's Tiru. We have the Tav for the second person imperfect and the Vav at the end, which makes it plural. Bresh Gimel Pasuk Sheshasre El Haisha Amar Harba Arbe Atzvonech Baharonech Beetsev Teldi Vanim Beel Ishech Tishukatech Bahu Yimshal Bach Ruth Aleph Pasuk Sheshasre Ruth one sixteen Vatomer Ruth Altif Kiivi Lazvech Lashuv Meacharayech Ki ash el asher telchi elech ve asher talini alim amech ami ve elohayech elohay. In these scriptures, we're going to see the second person feminine singular imperfect, and so uh, as part of the punishment, yeah, it says that the women will give birth um, with uh, in, in pain and sorrow. And so the verb to give birth comes from the root yod lamed dalet. You might know the word yelet, which means a small boy. And so in the imperfect, it loses the yod. We see the tav. And then uh, as a suffix, it has the yod on it. So the verb is tail d. You will give birth. In this second verse, which is from Ruth, this uh, very famous quote, uh, Ruth, longing to stay, longing to stay with the people of Naomi. Um, she has just so respected her mother-in-law and the faith of her mother-in-law that she wants to go with her. Uh, we're going to skip the first Tomer uh, and go on to the, to the verbs which are in the second person feminine singular. She says, uh, don't don't deny me. Don't don't push me away. I'll tifke e be. So, the verb there, uh, the root is pe gimel ayin, and we see the tav prefix and the yud suffix that makes it for the second person feminine singular. Um, she says, wherever you go, tail chi. Again, this is a verb which drops its first letter. The root is halach, he lamed chaf. Um, you know the word pi halacha for how we walk out our faith. In the imperfect, it drops a he. So we see the tav for the second person, the yud for the feminine singular, telchi, wherever you go. And uh, again, wherever you stay, uh, la lun, um, lud, lamed. Lamed Vav Nun, and so that becomes Talini, wherever you stay, uh, that's where I'm going to stay. Now it's a very interesting paradox that the third person feminine singular exactly mirrors the second person masculine singular. So when we look at that first Tomer, it looks like you said, or you will say, the vav imperfect, uh, the reversing vav makes it uh, imperfect, you, sh you said. But in fact, this is talking about Ruth. Ruth said. And so it is the exact same grammar for the third person feminine. She said is exactly, or she will say, is exactly the same as the masculine second person, singular, you will say. And please don't ask me why this is. I don't know. It's just one of the great mysteries. Maybe we can find out later. We'll look at some other examples of this. Vayikra ka pasuk shva Leviticus 20, verse 17. Vayish asher Yikach et achoto bat aviv o bat imo v'ra'a et ervata v'hi tir'e et ervato chesed hu v'nechrutu la'enei b'nei amam ervat achoto gila avono yisa. Shemot vav pasuk harishon. Exodus 
6.1 Vayomer Yehovah el Moshe Ata tire asher e'ese lefaro ki v'yar chazaka yishalchem v'yar chazaka yir garshem me'artso Just uh, as a little bit of a review to see how the second person masculine imperfect and the third person feminine imperfect singular are exactly the same. Um, the, we see the feminine in the first verse from Leviticus from the rules of purity, who can marry who, who can have sexual relations with whom. Um, and it says, he, tir e, she will see. So clearly because the pronoun is there and maybe because of, uh, because of the possible confusion, the pronoun is there, even though in general we don't need it. And ro e to see, and we have the tav tir e. In the second verse, it is uh, Moses, uh, Yahweh speaking to Moses, he says, Now you will see. It's the same tir e. So she will see, and you will see, singular masculine. Both these forms are exactly the same. I uh, hope this gives you a little light into why it's so difficult to do translation and sometimes we see things in our translations that seem a little strange or they don't make sense. This is part of that problem. Ruth Aleph Pasuk Echadisrei Ruth 1.11 V'tamer na'ami Shov na'venotai Lama telach na'imi Ba'od livanim b'me'ai V'hayu lachem la'anashim Ruth Aleph Pasuk Shaloshasre Ruth one thirteen Alahen to Saberna Ad Asher Yigdalu Alahen to Agena Levilti Hayot Laish Alvinotai Ki Marli Maod Mikem Ki Yats Abi Yad Yehova we often have to go to the Book of Ruth to find these uh, feminine conjugations. They're not so uh, common. We're going to look at the feminine plural, the imperfect. The second person and the third person have the same format. Uh, so at the beginning of this verse, Tamer Naami, again, that's a form it looks like you will say, but it is also she will say. It's the Bob reversing Bob. So, and she said Naami. And she's telling the girls, go back. And she's saying, why would you come with me? So again, we have the verb halach, the hay is dropped. We have the tav, which makes it the second person. And then this ending nun hay, which makes it the second person, feminine, plural. Why would you come with me, te lachna? We see the same form in uh, the second verse on, on the slide also from Ruth. Tisaberna, the tav, introducing the second person, uh, imperfect, and the na at the end, showing that it's feminine. Again, it could be a second person or third person. And actually, these forms are not being used so much anymore in, um, in Israel and in modern Hebrew. People are just tending to use the masculine forms. So these feminine forms for the plurals are kind of fading away. In the singular, they are still used. Uh, the other verb in this verse, agan, this is the only place that this word is ever used. And it means uh, to be a widow. So she's saying, are you going to um, sit at home being a widow, waiting for me to have another child, waiting for him to grow up, and this kind of thing. So te again, uh, the um, tav and the na ending. It makes it imperfect. It's either second or third person, feminine, plural. Bereshit Gimel Pasuk Sheva, Genesis 3, 7. Vatipa kachna ene shnehem, viedu ki aramim hem, viit peru ale te ina, via asula hem chagorot. Lachim bet, perak bet pasuk esrim varba. Second Kings 2 24. Vayifen acharav, 
וירעם ויקלקל להם בשם יהבה, ותצאנה שתיים דובים מן היער, ותבקענה מהם ארבעים ושני ילדים. Okay, here are some examples of the third person feminine plural imperfect. Uh, from Genesis, we see that both of their eyes were opened. So the body parts, uh, even though they take, a, they take actually a dual ending, which can resemble a masculine plural ending with a chirik and a yud and a memsofit im or ayim, but the body parts are considered to be feminine. So we see their eyes, ene, the eyes of shnehem, the two of them, tipa kachna. So we have the tav, which is the imperfect, and then we have the ending na for the feminine. Their eyes were open, tipa kachna. In the second verse, uh, we have two bears chasing <laughs> a bunch of um, cursors. So the bears come out, tetsena, and even though uh, the bears look plural, dubim, we see that it's shtayim, so it's also a feminine noun, and we see it conjugated. They came out, again, to come out is yud tzadi, aleph, but the yud falls away. So we have the tav for the imperfect, and that uh, feminine plural ending, na. They came out, and they tore these people to bits. Tiva uh, ka'na. So we have the root bet kuf ayin, to tear apart, to rip apart. We see the tav for the imperfect, and the na for the feminine plural. So this is the third person. It looks exactly the same as a second person feminine plural. Breshit bet pasuk arba. Genesis 2.4 Ela tol do tashamayim v'ha'aret v'hibar'am v'yom asot yehova Elohim eretz v'shamayim Bereshit bet esrim v'chad Genesis 2.21 V'yapel yehova Elohim tardema al ha'adam v'yishan v'yikach achat mitzalotav v'yizgor basar tachtena Rut Aleph Pasuk Shdemesre Ruth one twelve Shovna Venotai Lechna Kiza Kanti Mehiot Laish Ki Amarti Yeshli Tikva Gam Haiti Halila Laish Magamia Ladati Banim. There is one more use for the Tav as a prefix, and that is as to make a noun. In the first verse, we have toldot, which is generations. Again, from that root, yelled to give birth. The yud falls away, or maybe it changes to this vav, but it starts with a tav, toldot. In, um, in the second example, we see that uh, Yah is putting Adam into this deep sleep so that um, he can do the little surgery and get his rib out and, and build Eve for him. And so that deep sleep is tardema. The verb root is resh dalad mem. And actually, uh, this is a great example of a word that comes into English by metathesis. If you switch the dalad and the resh, then you have the sounds d, r, m. And it's where our word dream comes from. But in the Hebrew, the resh dalad mem and Tardema, this is a noun, he caused to fall on Adam this Tardema, this deep sleep. And finally, also again from Ruth, we see this word, which I know you know, Tikva, which means hope. This is a um, very interesting root. It comes from the root uh, Kuf Vav He, which means literally to stretch a line out. And uh, the idea, I guess, of stretching the line and holding that line for a long time, that is where our hope is. At the end of that line, we know that the Father will uh, come through, He will be there, He will fulfill the promises that He promised to us. So, tikva means hope. Again, the tav makes it a noun. 
So that finishes the prefixes for Tom. Next time we'll go on to the suffixes. In the meantime, Tasimata'inayim al-Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.